Comment. Oh, uh, Steven? Yeah. Are you said he and his father, father had to book the ticket and he said to me that had to do that. He will be left. He said to me that he said to you. What up? He said that he will be left. Steven! Wait, wait. I like. I like. Can you send it to me? Stephen! What? She said that he will be late. Okay, fine. Yeah. Thank you. This will be for you. I pass and use Hippocrat Hippopotamus Hippopotamus Hippocrat Hippocrat Hippopocrat Hippopocranus I do like it You were right to save it. You did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want any more uh, Yes, I have half done. And you were not in that half. I have only one. <laughs> oh, look at this horrendous mess I'm making. Physics lecture. Do you know how to use the the Do we have homework to do? Do I give a few questions at the end or are we in the middle? Which lesson are we on? I kind of remember doing the light and heat questions on the board. Oh yeah, we had the, uh, we didn't have, we had the question on the Yeah, the nitrogen one. Yeah, so we'll do that one first. Maybe you can close one of the windows on there. It's still a bit bright. Yeah, good, fine. All the way. Now, how many people tried that last question? Does silence mean nobody? Oh. Did you do six? Can I? Uh huh. I didn't know. Okay, that's good. I would like people to try it now just before I do it. Please okay. remember, please remember, this was a section A question. A, not even B. Yes. Wow. That's right, Faisal. You did the pie, right? Did I? Did I? Did Anyway, number six is what I care about because it was an exam question. Do you write the exam? No. Of course not. Can you get the bed, please? What 
I need to put this in. What's wrong with your seat? No. I'll do it. It's okay. Ah. Are you sure? What is this? Here. Not important? Yeah, yeah. Put my things down and just... Thanks. What? Put my things down and use this. For one! It's for four. What line is it for? I want people to do number six. Yeah, okay. Come on. Did you get number <coughs> six? So, um, uh, vaporization is from water to gas. Uh, liquid to gas. Uh, liquid to gas. Good call, Faisal. Good call. <laughs> Do we have math after this? No, we have to do math after this. Like after physics. Yeah, we have to do Dude, we have a double physics now. Have we done number six? Uh, yeah, you got home after this. <laughs> got time to after this? Yeah. At five o'clock? Yeah. LOL! Sorry. LOL! <laughs> so you were going to apologize for being mean. What? So you were going to apologize for being mean. <laughs> being honest. And inconsiderate. I'm considerate of my feelings. <laughs> Alright, do we have number six now, guys? Oh, come on! Did you do it for him? All right. Number five. Five. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll do it. Did you write the information down? I even can't understand to write. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Can you go back to that? I want to do it now. Wow! Do you have it? Okay. One minute, Yusuf, and then I'm doing it. Okay, come on. I need to get doing it now. Right, let's have a look. So, you have a glass. What's the temperature the glass is at? 20. 20 Celsius. And you put in liquid nitrogen, what temperature is it at? 1.95. And then it goes into the glass and then comes out as steam. Okay. At minus 195.7. Come on in, Andrew. I heard you'd be like, you had a thing with a ticket or something. I wasn't really listening to Puang, but I said that's fine. Okay. Was it something to do with a ticket? Yeah. Okay. So I got that part right. Uh, okay. Now, they want to know how much uh, uh, liquid nitrogen do you need until the glass is in thermal equilibrium? So you want the glass to cool down to what temperature? My, yeah, which in this case is minus 
So what is gaining energy here? Nitrogen. Very good. I'm losing it. So the gain in the nitrogen is in what form? Uh, heat capacity or uh, latent heat? No, it's not changing temperature. So it's latent heat. Well, what do you mean? Well, you have two formulas, mc dot theta or ml. So which one are you using? No, because ml. Because the liquid nitrogen is just becoming a gas. There's no change yeah. in its temperature. So you have M, which is what you want, times L equals... Do we know the mass of the glass? 0. Point <coughs> the glass, yeah. 50 grams. MC delta theta, which uh, delta theta is 215.7. And the C is 25, no, no, uh, 840. And the L here, what did I just do? Come on. Oops, I did it again. Show the marker. Um, 25. Why so what? It's fine, leave it. 257000. That's the latent heat. No, do I have too many zeros? Yeah. 257000 equals. So I just hit this in and I have my answer. Isn't this supposed to be 840 times 10? 10? No, no, no. Yeah, 10 to the power of 3. Is it? I don't know. No, it's not kilo. Um, I should say 40. So, can you go back to the Yep. Also, okay. Can you hit the fraction in, please? Fraction. Yeah. Can you tell me what this is? Zero point three five. Yeah. So three hundred and fifty grams. Okay, that was an exam question, and when you reali realize how it's done, you realize it's not that big of a question. Getting the right answer though, I don't know how many people got the right answer. One? What? You got a different answer? I'm going to continue unless you can tell me where the mistake is. You have a different answer? Do you type it in, right? Uh, could you give us the answer for the question? No. Like, just the answer. They're on YouTube. Oh. Just Google it. Dude, I think you typed it in wrong. No. I you typed it in right. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's right. I just need a. I don't think 350. I think I should go. Oh, 353. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> Let's continue. So, next lesson. Now, we're actually nearly finished materials. There's only um, two more topics left, I think. Hooks Law. And then once we finish materials, maybe we'll start talking about the lab. What? Lab? Yeah, lab report. You know you have to make one, don't you? Yeah, but that means we're going to do it. No. I have to do it before the...
I told you what I was going to do. I'm not going to change that. Why do you think I'm changing that? No, just Okay, which well, for, uh, step one, right. take yeah, a, right. step one, take a chill pill. Okay. <laughs> right. Hook's law. Oh, Brady and second semester yes, when <laughs> things are supposed to get difficult, <laughs> hooks it all. I'm happy. <laughs> so people are happy about <laughs> sequels. Yeah, yeah, this is supposed to be easy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sequels get... I don't even know why oh, the the spring. Yeah. Wait until I teach it. Maybe I'll make it harder. Yeah. Alright. I, I challenge you to make yeah, it harder. But look how many slides I have. <laughs> 16. Oh, what's going to happen? Yeah, if you want to do it, tomorrow during the break. Okay, Hook's Law. Did you write that down? Hook's Law. Try not to make it. No, don't worry. Okay. So it started off easy. So what happens as you pull on this spring? It gets bigger. <laughs> yeah, and also it pulls back. Uh, so the force increases as you extend the spring. Uh, and this is what Hook noticed with materials that, uh, yes, like Captain Hook. Uh, it says that the force needed to extend or compress the spring by distance x is proportional to that distance. That's what Hook noticed. So if you need to double the extension, then you will need to double the force. That is, mathematically, a uh, formula you were mentioning a moment ago. Uh, yes, F equals minus Kx. Uh, where K is a constant called the characteristic or the stiffness constant. And X is a small, compared to the total length uh, distance, uh, and what's the unit for K? Uh, no, 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 uh, Newton per, per kg something. Look at the formula and stop guessing like fools. Newton per per meter. Thank you. Newton per meter. Okay, so this is Hooke's formula. Please write it down. Why no, just the form. Why is it minus KX? Yeah, why is it minus, folks? It's one. Because it pulls. Yeah, the opposite direction, yeah. You are complaining about it and you forgot about the minus. Hmm. No, I, I never took it to the minus. Ah, so already you're learning something new. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Okay, continue. Uh, what should we write? I just need the formula and what each term in the formula means. You can write that down in your notebook. Okay. What's the constant factor? That's the name of the case. Yeah, it's also constant. Yeah. No, 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 no. Give it at least an adjective. Spring constant. Yes, yes, yes. Whoops. Okay. What's that? The distance displaced of the spring. Okay, continue. Four. Okay. Now, the natural length. Does anyone know this term? Mr. This is all O level stuff. Do you know this term? The actual length of yes. the length yeah. yeah. when no forces are applied on the. Much better. No, not the actual length of the spring. The length when there's no forces applied. Yeah. So the natural length L of a material is the length at which the material tends to return to. It's basically the length before any force is applied. That is, it's the length it wants to be at. Now, I wrote way too much there for an exam. Uh, you could just go with the middle sentence, it's quite precise. It is the length before any extending force is applied. So 
of a material. <laughs> that would not fly into the exam. <laughs> Define the extension <laughs> of a material. <laughs> X. Yeah, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me. Oh, that X. Oh, not the X in the quadratic. All right. Uh, no, no, no. Give, yeah, go ahead, uh, Yahya. I think you're giving me a real answer. What is this? The, the length of the thing after the forces applied and... The, the natural length, yeah. So it's the extra piece. So it is the length at which the material is extended beyond its natural length. In other words, the length minus the natural length. Now please write these terms down so I don't get ridiculous definitions in the exam. <laughs> Corrected your essay, Andrew. My essay. Mm. Good job. Yeah. I never thought you could use the word blasphemous in a physics essay. <laughs> 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 the word what? Blasphemous. Blasphemous. Uh, I circled that as a word not to use. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the right context. <laughs> but so far, if you think about it, it is. <laughs> yeah, you could use it, but you didn't pull it off so well, so just keep working on that. I was going to use heresy instead, but then I thought... <laughs> sure. You know, actually, that would have been a better fist. What? No. So, yes, it would have. me is this, this con context more. When, you, when, when you're talking about space or something like that, and someone says, oh, you know, I, I can fly to space. You look Let's like agree that neither fits a particular <laughs> situation so well. <laughs> and Faisal, yes, so you know what this means? It means culture. How disappointing. I'm not disappointed. I'm not joking. <laughs> Introduction and conclusion were terrible, yeah. but the middle part was good. <laughs> so I was reading, it's like, wow, this is really bad. This is really good. <laughs> Back to bad again. <laughs> no. So wait, I don't get it. That, like, were you being sarcastic about the whole thing? No. Good job. It was wow. a good job. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that to a student. I wouldn't say, good job, you loser. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a good job. It was a good job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Fuang, I corrected your essay. That word is terrible. Good. Introduction. <laughs> you, you had the exact same problem as Faisal. Why? <laughs> Introduction, bad. <coughs> Conclusion, bad. Main essay, very good. <laughs> you are more similar than you realize. I don't want to be the same like you. I'm sorry, you're quite similar. Someone needs to be dying. Someone needs to be dying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know which one I pick. 
<laughs> right, you got this definition? Be proud. <laughs> yeah, be proud. To me. <laughs> yeah, proud, that's the word. To be right. honest, I kill myself proud. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is the axe! Yeah. <laughs> I kept that in as sort of a, as a punchline. <laughs> right. Now, uh, if you look at this graph, this graph Does represents... Huh? Does it hurt? The this one hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no way of response to such a ridiculous <laughs> thing. Right. Um, here, this graph here is extension against force. So what's happening here is as the a, a type of experiment might be something like this. You would have a spring suspended from the ceiling and then you have a, a force on it like this. Oh no, sorry, the, I got that the wrong way. And um, you would have something maybe like this. You'd have a spring. And uh, I don't know if you've seen these before. I'm sure you have, but you have hooked onto the end of it something which measures uh, the force. Yeah. And in fact, <laughs> what? The spring balance, remember the spring balance used for the car? Yes. If you flip that around, you can use it to measure force. There's kg on one side and force on the other side. So what you can do is, you can change the x, and then you can observe the force that you get. If we flip the balance that we use, it measures the weight, not the mass? measures the weight, yeah. But you could take that and turn it horizontally mm -hmm. to measure a pulling force, like on a spring. Because weight is just force. Yeah, yeah. But it's the force of the pull of the earth. But that doesn't matter what it's, it's pulling <coughs> it. No, I know, again, again. If we're pulling it sideways, then we pull it. Yeah, it measures the pulling force. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when it's vertically, it measures the pulling there is, force there is of no the earth. Now, here what you do is you change the x and you measure the f. And you get this rather nice graph where as the x increases, the extension increases, the force increases in this linear manner. What I need you to do is to draw this because this is the type of thing they might ask you to draw at the exam. Uh, so this is force against extension. Please make sure you label the sides. It's a hookish Material. Huh? If it's a hookish material. If it's a, yes, a hookish material. Not quite the adjective, <laughs> but... Uh, um, is, it, is the extension always, like, is that the relation between them? They're not, qu not quite. Um, for the moment it is, but we'll advance it in a moment. Limit of proportionality. Is it? Limit yeah, of we, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not what I mean. What I mean is that, like, uh, it's 90% more than uh, Do you mean the angle? No, like 1, 1. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That depends on the material. So for some graphs, this line will be steeper. Mm -hmm. And for some materials, it would be more horizontal. Uh, no, I understand your question. It's not this perfect 1 to 1 at 45 degree relationship. Yes. What do you see? Like a life example of a spring that's kept sideways. I imagine it would have to be in some kind of engine. I like the train. When the train is parked in the station, yeah. the spring's mounted behind the yeah. bumpers for when it's docking. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What? I was thinking of something. I always think of fun and fun. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Side <laughs> <laughs> by spring. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Great game. Uh, okay, did you draw that graph? Now, let's have a look at what uh, the slope and the area represent on this graph. So, uh, here is x and here is f and here is the graph. So let's have a look at the slope. So the slope would be f2 minus f1 over x2 minus x1. Like from here to here, for example. Now, um, what is the formula for F according to Mr. Hook? Well, that'll be K X2 minus K X1 over X2 minus X1, which is K X2 minus X1 over X2 minus X1, which is 
Okay, so in other words, we get slope equals k. Uh, k. Now, that's what the slope is. Let's work out what the area is. Like, uh, I could do it from here to here, but just to make it easier for me, I'll just do it from here to here, okay? Just to make it a bit easier. Because what is this shape? Triangle. Triangle. So the area is a half the base by the height. Um, yeah, now, you actually know what the... Uh, F is here. Huh? Oh, I'm not sure what you're saying. Okay, no numbers for this one. Just keep it general. Um, if you want, you could change this into k x squared. Yeah, 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 k x, which is a half k x squared. But that doesn't quite answer what we have, does it? So what we could do is we could have a look at the units. Uh, what's the units here on the x-axis? Meters. Meters. And on the y-axis? So the units will be for area Newton meters. And what's the uh, meaning of Newton meters? Work, yeah. So in other words, the area equals the work done to move the spring, which is a half k x squared. Or, if you're moving it between two distances, like from x1 to x2, it will be a half k uh, x2 minus x1. If you were doing what? If you were like, if the spring was already extended and you were just extending it more, you know, if you were uh, pulling it more. This first formula, this first one is to go from the natural length to x. So I'll write L to L plus x. Whereas this formula here is obviously x1 to x2. Or whatever. Oops, sorry. In other words, the area represents the force, the work required in changing the length of the spring, and the slope represents the k. Okay, can we continue? Next. So the area is worked on and yeah. or what is and natural and length. Uh, I'm just saying that the first formula, half k x squared, that's the formula to get it from the natural length, the natural length plus the extension. In other words, if you think about it, it's how much energy is stored in the spring. So it's like potential energy. So we can say that um oh no, I didn't write it down in the box. If you have a spring that's L and you extend it to L plus K, the potential energy is a half K X squared. So when it's not extended, it doesn't have any potential energy. So that's kind of the point I'm trying to get to, and this is equal to the area. That's ultimately my point here. Okay, continue. Now, this is if the spring was ideal and perfect, but of course in real life it's not. In real life this happens. As you extend you get more force until you reach some limit and then it's no longer a straight line. This is what the graph looks like in real life. This point you were talking about earlier, Yusuf, uh, this is called the elastic limit. Okay. Now, when the material is extended from here to here, it follows Hooke's law, F equals K dot X. And when a material follows Hooke's law, we call it not hookish material. Does anyone know the adjective to describe a material that follows Hooke's law? Elastic. So we can say it's elastic here. I would like you to draw this graph and write the word elastic here. Write the word elastic, Yahya and Faisal, on your graph, which you should be drawing. If you don't want to draw a new graph, you can just extend the last graph you didn't draw. Okay. <laughs>
PHZ? FYZ. FYZ. Okay. Continue. Now, does anybody know here what it's called That's when it breaks? No, no. This isn't when it, the graph ends, then it breaks. When it's bent, it's Sorry, I meant by break, I meant break the limit, yeah, not physically break. Exactly. So when it passes the limit, this region is called plastic. plastic. Now, I should tell you, this is a common question in the exam where they ask you to draw this graph and to mark in the regions. So this region is called elastic and this region is called plastic. Do we do stress and strain? Yep. I saw the formula. <coughs> what does stress over strain give us? Young's modulus. Okay, continue. Did you write elastic and plastic? What's wrong, Flom? Here, this is called elastic. And here, this is called plastic. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? Elastic, when you pull it, it goes back to the same way it is. Plastic, when you pull it, it gets wrong. It doesn't come back. It stays. Look. This is uh, plastic. It doesn't it doesn't stretch back. But like Faisal was saying, like... Like a rubber band. Rubber well, I mean band. Based on the plastic. It doesn't like me. True. Uh, Right, continue. Wait, wait. Look, Fong. Yeah, this goes back elastic. Don't care. This doesn't go back elastic. Yeah, it's called plastic. Oh, yeah, sorry. Plastic. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's, it's actually is called yeah. plastic, yeah. yeah. You need a different I'm example. I'm pulling it, yeah? I know that is. No, 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 plastic now has two meanings, <laughs> plastic is the opposite of elastic, <laughs> and <laughs> also the if material, if you bend this, would it go back the same way it was, if you bend the metal bar, would it go back the same way it was, yes, you can call the metal bar, oh, plastic, yeah. bubble gum, this is a plastic material, it's not like chemistry, kind of, different, Definition. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Plastic. <laughs> no, no. Elastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Continuing. So oh, my butt can drop everything. Buy some. TMI. TMI. <laughs> right. The material won't follow Hooke's law for any x. It'll only follow it up to a point. Some terms. Elastic. The material follows Hooke's law. As Spicel puts it, it's a hookish material. Plastic is an unhookish material. <laughs> it no longer follows Hooke's law. Elastic limit? The point at which the material stops being elastic. And becomes plastic. Yeah. Now, please write these definitions down. They are very much exam definitions. Breaking point. But like our graph was so more detailed than just those three. What do you want from me? Breaking I'm just teaching you what I'm told to teach you from the syllabus. I would love to do extra stuff What's with you. Okay, you got that? Yes. So what's the difference between elastic limit and plastic? Pla elastic limit is the point at which it transitions from being elastic to plastic. So if we leave it, like, uh, will it go back? <laughs> no. Once it passes the elastic limit and becomes plastic, it loses its stretchiness. What about like when you pull some, uh, some 
string they go back and then all the way yeah, down. Yeah, all the way down. Yeah. That's cr- that's yeah, that's still plastic then because you needed to return to the original shape. Yeah. Okay. So uh, next, uh, a mass M is home to an elastic material which is suspended from the ceiling, or a mass M sits on top of a spring. In both cases, we have the same situation. A thing is obeying Hooke's law at the end of the spring. What equation can be found for such a motion? Or, using my bad grammar, what equation can be found for such a motion? <coughs> Let's have a look. Uh, now, there's going to be a proof. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the proof. Oh, for goodness sake, come on. Please pay attention, the proof is a bit difficult, but it's a useful one to see. Come on. There we go. Okay, so here's the proof. Right, whoops, that's not part of the proof. Okay, so uh, here on the ceiling, uh, you have the spring hanging down, and then you put a mass M at the end of it. That's too fat. Okay, and then you put a mass M at the end. What would happen to the spring? Well, it would stretch down, wouldn't it? So I'll write that as L plus some amount, R, which we'll call it X. Let's work out what this X is firstly. So what forces are acting on the spring here? <coughs> Gravity is 1, which is mg, and upwards is hook from the spring. Now, they must be equal because it's balanced here. So you get mg equals kx. So then x equals mg over k. So now we have this situation. This is m and this is um, l plus mg over k. Then what I do is I come along and then I stretch it down even more. Let's call this distance x again, but please don't be confused. This x is different to the one earlier. Okay, so this is like a different part now. What would happen now when I pull it down? It's different to the first half of the story. Here, this just slowly sinks down and then stops. But if I come along and then pull it down, what would happen to it? Uh, actually, you know what? Let's say I pull it down at distance A instead of X, actually, to make that better. So if I pull it down A, what will happen? No, I just described the motion. What would happen? Yeah, and then? It goes all the way up. It goes up and down, then. It bobs up and down. So if you put it on No, it'll snap back up. It's not back up. So let's calculate the force here. We need to know um, the extension. So let's just call the extension x for the moment. So the total force is the force up, which is k x, yeah, minus the force down, which is m g. Yeah. Now um, <coughs> let's see. That is f equals now. This x here, I can kind of clean this up a little bit. <coughs> the extension is not x, is it? That's just the extension from when it was settled. But the total extension is not x because it's already extended. By how much is it already extended in this picture? It's the mg over k. That happened in the previous part of the story. So the total extension is not just x. Really, I'll just put x in quotation marks. Really, it's mg over k plus x minus mg. Um, a is just, uh, forget about the a for the moment. <coughs> the a is like the maximum you pull it down. Just forget about it for the moment. Now, th- that's nice because what happens here when you expand? This cancels this, and then mg and the mg, they cancel. So here you get um, 
f equals okay. kx. I'm sorry, I got confused on my proof and just ended up back with a ridiculous statement. I'm going to start this again, but be less tired as I'm doing it. Apologies. Right, the first half was still right. So here's the ceiling, and it extends down here, and the length now is L plus, uh, what did I say a moment ago? Uh. No, 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 the extension I worked out a moment ago. MG, okay. All right. Now, someone comes along and pulls it down further. And it was here at rest. And this distance here is the same as this distance. But then someone pulls it down further. And it will go up, down, up, down. And I'll call this distance here, I don't know something. It's not important actually. I called it A earlier. So the total force acting on it would be the force up minus the force down. Yes. And that would be K. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Ha, ha, ha. That's so funny. Yeah, in the first one. Yeah. One you moment, please. Anyway, um, that's K and the extension. Let's work out what that is. That will be mg over K plus X minus mg. No, this is ending up in the same well, what situation. Is, what is L plus MG over K? Yeah, that's so balanced. The one on the right, the left. The L plus MG over K. Ah, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so tired. Well, what's the L? No, don't be asking me questions because I don't know what I'm doing right now. So then I can't answer questions. Okay. Thank you for your understanding. Right. One more go. Okay. From the beginning. <coughs> I own this. Right. <coughs> we have a spring. Its natural length is L and its constant is K. And then we put a weight on it and it extends down a distance here. Uh, and we call this distance it extends down. For the moment, we'll just call it X or whatever. So there's two forces acting here. One force going up which is kx and then one force going down which is mg and they should be equal so we get kx equals mg yes. so x equals mg over k so that's how much it extends down yes now let's continue the story So here it is here, and its current length is L plus X, which we got a moment ago is MG over K. Yes? Okay, so let's have a look at the force on it. Let's imagine I pull it down a little bit more, and we call this distance <coughs> a different X, though. So I, don't, I was getting confused a moment ago, so I'll just call this distance here delta X. And it goes down, back up, down, back up, down, back up, like that. Let's look at the force on it now. So the force on it, that's equal to MA. And MA will be the force up minus the force down. This is what I wanted to do a moment ago. So that means MA, force up, is K. And the extension is mg over k plus the delta x yes. and the force down is mg yes. so you get ma equals and then here the k's cancel and you get mg cancel with that so you get delta. k delta x 
so then you get, uh, I know this looks like what I got twice before, but I've realized what I was supposed to do next now, divide by the m. So I get a equals k over m delta x. Now, if you want, you can have a minus in here because it depends on the direction. But if I now say let omega equal the square root of k over m, and if I just call delta x, let me just call it x to make it look a bit neater, I get a equals omega squared x. Now, does that look familiar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is type of formula is this from? Circular. Not circular, the other one? Harmonic. The simple harmonic mm -hmm. motion. So this is simple harmonic motion, and in simple harmonic motion you have the formula for time. What's the formula for time? Uh, one over the, uh, uh, the other one, 2 pi over uh, omega, omega, which is 2 pi over root over k over m. So then you end up with the result t equals 2 pi root <coughs> m over k. Ah, uh, yeah, satisfying. So. If you know the mass of the, uh, the weight and the k for the spring, then you can know the time it takes for it to bob up and down. Do you understand? Yeah. So this should remind you of another formula you saw. This one is like, yeah, what one is it, Omar? Isn't it very similar? So this one is for when you have a spring and it's bobbing up and down and this one here is for when you have a yeah, pendulum yeah. so here you need to know what the L and the G is and here you need to know what the M and the K is now here you really only need to know the L because everybody knows the G but in this one you need to know both I want to do the proof for some reason I don't understand why now I'm very tired, so I'm not thinking straight, but I, I wanted to do the proof, so I'm happy that I've done the proof now. But for the exam, you don't need the proof. Here are the formulas. Oh, and by the way, this also works, I believe, if it's lying horizontally as well. No, no, it, uh, that's what I mean. This also works if it's lying on the spring like this, like a car. And my point is, it doesn't have to be hanging from the ceiling. No. It could be on a table, like this. Okay. You can see how similar the formulas look. The M in this formula is like the L in this formula. And the G constant in this formula is like the K constant in the other formula. So, please make note of this formula here. You're welcome. You're like, this is easy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Why are we doing this? Next. Because it's just expand on. And plus x, even down to extend x. Extension. No, x is the extension. L plus x is the total length. So this formula you need. You got that formula? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's interesting, um, what's missing in this formula? You don't have the A, which is how far you pull it down. And what else is missing? The natural length. You didn't need to know that. I, just, I think that's interesting that those two constants are not important. You don't need to know the natural length to work out the time. You only need to know the mass and the stiffness constant. The natural length is not important. And also, the amplitude is not important, which means, you might have trouble believing this, it doesn't matter how far down you pull the spring, it doesn't change the time. <coughs> so, if you pull it a little bit and let go, and this takes one second, and if you pull it more and let go, it's still one second. Lee, are you causing trouble? <laughs> I don't either. Do you understand what I'm saying, Omar? How? What do you mean, how? Physics. Physics. We proved it. The, yeah, yeah. The formula does not care about the length of the spring. Do you see any length in this formula? No, but like if you put it 
the spring you know, you see, this is what you think because this is what this is like the type of thinking where people think heavier objects fall faster. But when you actually do it and you can see the formula and actually time it, you'll discover that pulling it down longer or shorter does not change the time. I know it feels like it should. It should feel like a different time. Just like it feels like heavier objects should land first. It's like the simple harmonic theory it's all this. For which one? The oh yes, it is exactly like that. Yes, which we had a good, which we had a good discussion about. So we're not going to talk more about it here. Uh, yes, I remember I was talking extensively about that. So continuing, let's have a look at some examples. Can you try this one, please? It's quite simple. Uh, you have a natural length of ten centimeters and a constant of one. There we go. And I want to know the force. Should only take you like ten seconds. Yeah. yeah. What's the answer? Uh, 0 0.01. Oh, 0 0.1. Oh, right, don't get too cocky. Yeah, Which is it? 0 0.1. Yeah. yeah. What unit? Uh, Oh, and G. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much force okay. is required? <laughs> What's the unit? The Q. Do you need me to do that one or is not? Yes, no? No? Okay. Let's look at a harder one. A spring is hanging from the ceiling and a two kilogram mass is put at the end of the spring and the spring extends by five centimeters. What's the K? Now, I'll let you try this one. What's happening here is you put the mass on the spring and then the spring settles down. What's the K? Hint, the up force should equal the down force. What's wrong, Lee? Really? You're good? Okay, did you get an answer here? Yeah. What you got? <laughs> minus. Don't worry about the minus. What did you get? Uh, three very good. Very good, everybody. Okay. You're being a bit smarter than normal. Good job. Right. Next, now. A spring... Oh. Yes? Why do we not care about the minus? Ah, uh, the minus is just to indicate the direction, which we don't really need to know. A spring with constant 2 is attached to the wall. A boy pulls it 10 centimetres. How much work was done by the boy? So that's the other formula from earlier. Do you remember it? What's wrong, what's wrong? Okay, no, no, what's wrong, what's wrong? What's wrong? I don't understand when you speak to me. What's wrong? Okay. Do you want me to do it? Alright, this one here. Have an answer yet? So here... The boy pulls it... I don't know why his arms are going the wrong way. Uh, the boy pulls it a distance of 10 centimetres and the K is 2 newtons per metre and I want to know how much work is done so what's the formula Wong? or you know Andrew what is it? a half KX squared so in this case the answer would be don't we, we we're not given the KI if we suppose to be put as Oh can I answer? Uh, 
Zero point zero one joules. Ten millijoules. Yes. Did you do zero point one squared? Yes. So what did you get? I think it's I know what you did, you hit square twice, didn't you? No, no one was zero 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 one. Yeah, yeah, zero 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 zero. Wait, so Lee's wrong? What? Yeah, he's wrong. wrong. No, you're wrong. What? You didn't square the zero point zero point one. Yeah, hang on, look. A half times yeah, two like times right, zero point zero. one squared. Yes, zero. Which is zero point zero yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, leave me alone. What's wrong with this one? No, seriously, guys, what's wrong? Is there anything wrong with this one? No. No? no, no, no. Okay. Next. A rubber band is attached to the seal and a 100 gram weight is hung on the rubber band and it extends 5 centimeters. The weight is pulled down a further 4 how long until the weight, weight reaches the maximum height. Okay, I'll draw that for you. So what you have here, ceiling, and then some rubber, and then you put on it, um, what did I say, or did I not even give you the weight? For goodness sake, 100 grams. So this is 0 0.1 kg, and it extends a distance of 5 centimeters. And it's still at rest here and then somebody comes along <coughs> and pulls it down another four centimeters and then let's go so what's the initial one? oh this is just nothing's happening so in the story you have a spring and then you put a weight to it and it falls five centimeters and then uh, you pull it down another four centimeters and the question is how long until this is back up to here so I want the time now this is a getting harder now it's getting harder so see what you can come up with here. Turn from beginning to end? From bottom to top. Yeah, of course, yeah. Huh? Mm. Did you get an answer? What answer mm. you get? Mm. Mm. Seems a bit big, but yes, a believable answer. Okay, let's have a look here. Three. You are close if you got three, but you forgot to do something. Now, what forces are acting here? Uh. Weight. How much is that? Mg. And then here? Hooke's law, which is K. What's the K? Oh no, I got 0 0.2. 0 0.02. No, the K? 5. Oh, sorry, I, I understand my mistake. I kept saying K. The X, 0 0.05. And the K is, we don't know. 
But we can say that 0.05k equals 0.1g. So this gives us the k. So what do we get for k? 19.62? Newtons per coulomb. 0.1g divided by 0.05. Good. Now if you look here, what's the formula for time? Uh, 2 pi root wait, m, m over k. 0.01 divided by 0.05? No. Times g. Isn't it 9? It's what 9? No, that's no, why it's g. No, no, in the middle it's 5. And now for this part, you pull it down another 4, and the total is 9, correct? So can't we do that? No, because that hasn't happened yet in this part of the story. It's just pulled down 5. <coughs> no? This part of the story yeah, hasn't it happened yet here. If mg is equal to kf, then but there's a huge difference because in this part of the story this force yeah. does not equal this force. Which one will be bigger? Why? It it's about to move up. So it's a, it's a huge difference. Uh, so the T here is 2 pi root m over k and if you put in the m and the k which we have over here, what did you get for the T? 0.45? And then uh, we get our answer, or do we? Is this the final answer? Mm -hmm. No. We need to divide it by two. by 2, because that's only half the journey. Okay. Like the pendulum that only swings half. What did you put for m? Uh, it's given, 0 0.1. So the answer is 0 0.225 seconds. So, yes, your 1.3, I thought sounded a bit big. Okay, did you write that down? So Yusuf, what was your mistake? Uh, at the beginning I, uh, I, I didn't divide by, uh, like to find k I didn't divide by 0.1g, like divide 0.05 by, 0.1g by 0.05. I only divided 0.1. Um, yeah. In other words, you forgot the J. Yes. Okay. You could have just said that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, continue. Do you have this? Continue. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh. Chillax. We'll do these. We'll do these questions together. Now we'll do them together. We'll take we'll take turns. It'll be fun. I'm glad nobody believes me. Uh, okay, so the first one: a piece of rubber has a constant five, and you stretch it until you get twenty newtons of force. How far did you extend it? Okay, try this one. I should I hope only take you one minute. One minute at most, yes. Now, have you got the right answer this time? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. What did you get? Four. Oh, four, four. <laughs> <laughs> four is not like close. This is it. Oh my God. That's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, number one here. F equals 20 newtons. K equals 5 newtons per meter. And by using F equals KX, with the minus, we don't care about the minus, X equals F over K, which is 20 over 5, which is 4 watt. Good. Okie dokie. Number 2. What is the spring constant of the spring that is attached to the ceiling and extends by 2 centimetres when a kilogram is put on it? Okay, try this one again. We ignore the minus. Yeah. 
so tired of this projector moving, it's starting to annoy me. Wait, stay there. Good job, yeah, yeah. Did you get the same answer as you? Yes. Andrew? Yep. Good work. Right, so here. Oh, you can't run back. I don't see that big. Yeah. It can be anything you want. It's only limited by your imagination. Right, number two, what did I give you? Um, I gave you the extension. I'm sorry, the projector just really wants to be in the middle, so I'm just going to leave it there. Um, two. And the mass is 1 kg. So what's happening here is it's hanging like this. You get a force here, which is kx, and a force here, which is mg. And kx equals mg. So k equals mg over x which is 1 times 9.81 over 0 0.02 yeah, yeah. Uh, so what is that? Mm -hmm. 4.91 uh, newtons per meter yeah <coughs> okay Right. And you put on the wooden thing. No, it's the stand. It's like not tight enough. Is that an angle? But what else? Okay, number three. Can I go to number three? Okay. Number three. Uh, constant of ten. Uh, it's put on the ground. A weight is put on the spring and the spring compresses 3 centimeters. How much work has the weight done? Mm -hmm. How much work? Who are you talking about? Mm -hmm. No friends? No friends? Yeah. 45. I understand. 45? No, 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 no. Sorry. 45 what? Apples? No, 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 no. What unit? Uh, yeah. 4.5 what? Bananas? Minus, 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 minus 3 what? Oh. Uh, um, what Jules, the unit? Jules. Jules. <laughs> Right, so what's the core? What's the formula for work? Okay, yeah. Work is a half k x squared. Now, what do we know here? I think we know the k. What was it? Yeah, it was, 10. 10. was 10. And did we know the x? Yeah, three. Oh, wait, so this is for babies. So this is 5 times 0 0.03 squared, which gives you... Uh, minus 4.5 times 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 4.
Four people each of mass 65 kg sit in a car. The car reduces in height and distance of 1.5 cm. The car has mass of 2000 kg. The car reduces in height because four of the suspension springs were compressed. So the suspension springs are the springs on the wheels. Uh, when the people get out of the car, the car wobbles up and down, which you would notice. Uh, what is the periodic time of this wobble? We don't need the mass of the car in any way. I told you you'd have fun. <laughs> Just in time, Piper, so we're doing question four. I'd be very happy if you could do number four. I doubt that you can do it. No, I'm being serious. Because you were asleep during the presentation of the formula you need. <laughs> I don't know what you were dreaming about, but no, we don't have a law for springs in parallel or series. No, they are differently. I know, but that's not what we're doing. Do we take the mass of the man or the man and the coat? That's your call. Oh. I'm going to do it in a moment. You're so great, didn't you? Okay. Didn't you? No, I. Uh, yeah. Will I do it, or do you need more time? You got an answer. Yeah. Okay, what answer did you get? You got that wrong well, one. Very good. What did you get? We'll see. We'll see right now. So we think. Picture the car as being four springs. Now, what is when the person, the four people stand on the car? It bounces. It compresses. The downward weight of the four people, which is, uh, what did I say the mass was? 65. 65. That's equal to the upward force of the four springs. Did I give you the K? No. No. Did I give you the X? Yes. What was it? Zero point zero one. Zero point zero one. Zero one. Now, why did I not include the mass of the car here? Oh, zero point zero one five. Why did I not include the mass of the car here? You don't need the mass of the car. Just like we didn't need to know the mass of the spring. You know, in the formula on the graph, why is it four k? Because there's four springs. Maybe you have five. Huh? Maybe you have five. So we, what code did you get on? Indeed. <laughs> right. So anyway, this gives me the k. Can you calculate that, please? Give me the k here. So the k is four times sixty-five times g over 4 times 0 0.015 okay. 
Second. So finally I wanted the time. This is the you're talking about? Yes. And I proved it too. Oh, how interesting. It was quite interesting, if not painful. I, I remember. Oh, That's that upside down. Yeah, you just it down. No. Yeah, no. yeah, it was only no, three I times. Was, I was awake. I was, uh, you fell asleep on the went. third one, but <laughs> I proved it. In my senses, you were like, oh no, I'll repeat this, I'll make it right this time. Yes. And then you. And then you were like, yeah, I'll do it this time. <laughs> yeah, I just needed three attempts. Give me a break. Right, what do I use as a mass? Uh, yeah. The whole thing. No. <laughs> uh, well, 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 well. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Yeah, that's what I said. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, it's worth learning the lesson that in the exam and in physics books, they might throw in a piece of information that you don't actually need. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. Right. Huh? What are you saying, Faisal? What's wrong, Omar? Did you write, did you calculate the time here? I was thinking the same, but could only the mass of the carbon. Yeah, because, <coughs> every, because everyone taught it, yeah. You should be independent. Okay, what does that M stand for? Mass of what is on the spring. On the spring. Yeah. Not the mass of the spring, what's on the spring. 0.49. Double. Sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. That's the right one. In this Ooh. case, you're the spring. Okay. Continue. Yes. So, <coughs> next one. Can you, can you guys agree? No. Oh, Faisal, right, so can you go back to being asleep? I think I prefer you this way. A 2 kilogram mass is placed at the top of a wedge of height 4.905. With barbecue sauce. 4.905 meters. The mass slides down the face of the wedge and is brought to rest by a spring that should take us being which sits at the bottom of the wedge. The spring has a stiffness constant of 20 kilo newtons per meter. By how much is the spring depressed? So what you have here is a spring of 20 kilo newtons per meter. And the block flies down until it hits the spring. And then of course, obviously, the spring then compresses so I want to know by how much does it compress. And then yeah, and then it'll be pushed back up. But I want to know how much it compresses first. This is the question. I'll give you a moment to try this. Did you everything is on the picture, but I can <coughs> go back to the question here. A two kilogram mass is placed on the top of a wedge at a height of four point nine oh five meters above the ground. The mass slides down the face of the wedge and is brought to rest by a spring which sits at the bottom of the wedge. The spring has a stiffness constant of 20 kilo newtons per meter. By how much does the spring depress? Yes. And for the height, do I use this or this? Can what I do you think? This? What do you think? No, what do you think? This. Yes. Here's the picture of it. How much would you send this picture for? This picture? It's for free on YouTube. Whoa. Just do a screen grab. Oh, what's the mass of the uh, two kilograms? Did I tell you it? Two kilograms. Can I answer Lee? <gasps> I made a question that Lee can't do. I'm so happy. Well, does it have to do with something we did before? 
Yes, I'm not going to give you something you haven't done. No, there goes that. He has a completely accurate question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are 100% correct. This has something to do with what we did in semester one. Yes. Yeah, it comes in, hits the spring, slows down. This is the distance I want. Faisal, have you got an answer for me? I'm playing around with it in my head. I'm, I just woke up. Woke up. You can see what's coming. I want to write now. <laughs> you have an answer, you said? What you got? Could this be possible? That's a believable answer for a spring. That's small. That's small. Okay. Uh, Wait, tell me. Show me. Let's bring lines. Yeah, I believe that. How long is this been? That's all the information, Lee. I don't give you any more. Right, are we ready for this one? Okay. So, Yusuf, tell the class the secret to doing this. Yeah, that the energy here will equal the energy here. This energy is only potential. This energy here is only from the spring because it has no potential and no kinetic because that rest. What is the potential? Yeah, the spring potential. No, but gravity potential. Yeah. Oh, this is on the ground. Yeah. Oh, oh come on, <laughs> give me a break. Give me a break. Come on, give me a break. Right, so you have MGH equals, what's the formula from today? A half K X squared. And what am I looking for? X squared. The X, yeah. So that is 2 MGH over K square root which is square root uh, a thing and thing is what? Because we know the M, the G, the H and the K so what do we get here for our X? May I? Square root 2 times 0 0.4 what's the mass? 0 0.7 2 kilograms 2 times 2 times 9.81 times 4.8 905 over, and what's the K? 20,000. So this works out to be 0 0.0981 meters. Or in other words, 9.81 centimeters. What's really cool about this question is you didn't need to know the angle of the wedge, did you? You just needed to know what? So, if I was to do this, this is still 4.905, but instead of having a wedge, I have this shape. And put the spring here, like this. And put the block here. It's the same. Because, what energy do we have here? <coughs> only potential. And here? Only kinetic. Yeah? Lee, or Andrew, you don't look happy with this. I understand this, but I'm like, when I imagine it... I you think these should be different to this? I th yeah, I feel like that. Yeah? It's not going to produce enough force to push the spring as much as that. As this one here? Yeah, yeah it feels like uh, this is not as dramatic as this. Isn't it? Oh. We couldn't have that because like, it's deeper. Yeah, you see, this is, yeah, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, the other thing is your personal experience is shaping your view here because in real life, 
uh, you are right. This would not depress as much as this. Why not? In real life. Uh, the, friction. the friction on the ground. By making the ground bigger, you make more friction. It sort of is breaking to a halt by sliding along the ground. So in real life, you're right, this would not depress as much as this. But if you got this nice and smooth, like on some ice surface, then it would. But in real life, of course, it wouldn't, for the reason I just said. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I like this question. Okay. I like it. Um, finished. Mom, wake up! <laughs> Imagine if you did that, I don't think they do. Uh, what is it? <laughs> 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 <laughs>